All right, so I'm starting out just by drawing a line lightly before I use the scalpel to, um, to cut through. So I'm starting the cut with the, um, the scalpel tool um, and I'm going at a diagonal. You'll notice as I keep cutting. Right now I'm just kind of playing around with how much of the bowl I want to cut and I'm going downwards in a spiral motion because I want the, the spiral. So you want to cut from bottom to top slowly at an angle. Um, this is the first time I've made a two-piece chip and dip bowl like this. So I, it took me a little while um, figuring out where I wanted, how far I wanted to cut into the bowl and just playing around with where I wanted it. At this point, I'm just drawing a line where the rim meets the dip bowl and I'm tracing it because I decided to cut the bowl so it would fit better and not be as like thick. I didn't want two rims overlapping each other because it'd be too thick. That's just my preference. So after I cut the small bowl, it's time to uh, score and slip and attach them before the next step. Now that they are attached, I'm pretty strongly pinching the two pieces together, taking out a little bit more of that rim, as you can see. Um, but I'm really pinching quite hard to merge the two pieces together. Um, and I, I spent quite a bit of time, this video is edited, so um, I spent a good amount of time making sure it had a good firm connection before I started to smooth it out. Time to get my handy dandy flexible red rubber rib. Um, this thing's awesome. It just, it smooths so nicely and it's such a great tool to have. They come in all different sizes, well, small, medium, and large in different shapes, but I like the kidney uh, shape the best. Um, but anyway, it, it just really finished, it finishes things up nicely. So now it's time to even out the rim as much as I can with that little bump. Um, I know I should be using a Sure Foam, thanks to Michelle Dickey. She's right. Um, that's a great tool. I will definitely use that on the next um, bowl. They're just, it's an amazing tool to use instead of using this knife and trying to get everything perfect. Um, anyway. And here she is, all done. We're gonna dry it, fire it, and glaze it. Two coats blue midnight all over.
The next two coats are going to be two times of Blue Rutile by Amico. Um, you're going to notice too, this is something to be aware of. On the outside, I'm only going like halfway down with the Blue Midnight and I'm staggering the glazes as I keep layering because if you don't, it definitely will run off the pot um, because these this combination is very drippy to begin with a lot of runners um so just be mindful and um uh, notice how i'm staggering the glazes as i'm layering them now we're adding one coat of seaweed by amico Now we're adding one coat of Vert Luster by Amico. Next up is Mako's Light Flux, one heavy coat on the rim. So it's two times blue midnight, two times blue rutile, one time seaweed. This one is one time vert luster. And then the rim was a heavy rim of flux. I absolutely love this. Nice. I went super easy on the outside because I was so worried. I was worried about this corner dripping and sticking. So I kind of wiped back a lot of glaze right here. I love it. Here's a bonus video for you. Okay, I'm in my bathroom. So if you hear an echo, I'm sorry, but it's kind of the brightest place right now. Anyway, this is the bowl obviously, that we made. So these are the same exact glaze combination, except, whoops, except this one has vert luster and this one has lustrous jade. And look at the difference and look at these wispies. Is that not beautiful? This one's more blue with the vert luster. And this one is like more green. So I just wanted to show you the difference so you guys can play around and uh, have some fun. Hope you enjoyed the video. And wishing you all a very happy new year. I appreciate each and every one of you.